Hey everyone, this is Ross from CryptoCrane. Today, I'll be reviewing the brand new Antminer A3 Blake 2B Miner from Bitmain. What is Blake 2B, you ask? That's the hashing algorithm used by SiaCoin, which is a cryptocurrency that aims to be a decentralized cloud storage platform. Being the first consumer available ASIC capable of using the Blake 2B algorithm, the 815 giga hashes per second that is advertised is truly breathtaking. Unfortunately, there are currently no other viable cryptocurrencies that use the Blake 2B algorithm, which begs the question, why didn't Bitmain simply advertise this as the Antminer A3 Sia coin miner? They didn't shy away with the L3 Plus Litecoin miner, the D3 Dash miner, or the S9 Bitcoin miner. I've got a sneaking suspicion that this may due to some interesting politics between Bitmain and the Sia coin developer community. We'll get to that in a few minutes though. The Antminer A3 borrows the same form factor found in the Antminer S9, D3, and L3 Plus series, so it should look familiar to most of you. Just as a quick side note, if you're watching this video on someone else's channel, then know that they've taken it without our permission and they may be attempting to mislead or scam you. From the top view, you can see that there are three hashing boards that each have three 6-pin PCIe power connectors. There's also a 6-pin PCIe power connector on the I.O. board, which powers the fans and the BeagleBone Black controller. As usual, there are two high airflow fans, one on the front for intake and another on the back for exhaust. I still haven't figured out why, but people often ask how much these weigh. This one is just under 10 pounds. Knowing the dimensions on the other hand could be very helpful if you're planning a space to run one, or many. Measuring 8.2 inches tall, this is the tallest ant miner by a slight margin. 12.3 inches long isn't unusual, and neither is the 4.92 inches wide, which is about the same as the fan. Okay, so here's the big question. Which power supply should you use? I'm partial to the APW3++ from Bitmain because it has specifically been designed for the quick power load ramp ups required by these miners, and it also has the right number of power connectors. Oops. The part that is unclear is whether you can safely run a single APW3++ on a standard home 120 volt outlet to power the amp miner A3. Let's find out, shall we? Oh, and Bitmain, if you're watching, please make the power cables a few inches longer next time. Always remember to make sure the power supply is unplugged from the wall before connecting or disconnecting any cables from the miner. Here, I have a sound decibel meter to measure how loud the A3 is. According to Bitmain, it should be around 76 decibels. Also note that I'm using a wireless network bridge to connect the A3 to my home network. Okay, everything looks like it's ready, so it's time to plug in the power supply and start mining some Sia coin. Oh, before I forget, I'm using a standard C13 PC power cable to connect to the APW3++ power supply, which is not included. Also, note the watt meter at the top right shows that this is a 120 volt circuit. The fans start kicking into high gear at around a minute 30. Unfortunately, I left the decibel meter on average mode, but you can still see the real-time levels at the top right of the iPad screen. The Antminer A3 starts mining just after the 2 minute mark. You can tell by the spike in power usage on the watt meter, as well as by the green blinking status light. After running for a few minutes, I think it's safe to say that the Antminer A3 is just as annoying as every other Antminer. Seeing the power usage at 1375 watts is a bit concerning, especially since the advertised draw was supposed to be around 1275 watts, 
the 1375 watts it's currently using is beyond the 1200 watt limit of the APW3++ while on a 120 volt circuit. I cannot recommend doing this long term. It's not uncommon for people to lose hashing boards due to the power source being unable to keep up with the demand. Even worse, it could cause a fire. At 1375 watts on a 120 volt circuit, the A3 needs 11.45 amps. This means that you cannot run more than one A3 per 15 amp circuit, just like the S9 or D3 miners. To power down the amp miner A3, simply disconnect the power cable from the power supply. The power supply has large capacitors that need to fully discharge before you can disconnect the PCIe power connectors from the miner. The fans are a good indicator, so wait until they stop spinning before proceeding. Alright, let's move this A3 to a 240 volt environment and see if it draws the same amount of power. As you can see, using the Antminer A3 with an APW3++ on a higher voltage circuit saves about 100 watts, which puts the A3 almost exactly at the 1275 watts advertised by Bitmain. For this next part, I'm going to hand you over to our newest associate, Jason. Jason, take it away. Thanks, Ross. Now let's go configure the A3 that you just set up. From a computer on the same network as your A3, open up a browser and connect to the IP address. If you need assistance finding the IP address of your A3, you can look at our S9 video available at youtube.com slash cryptocrane. We also have a link in the description. Once you enter the right IP address and you're met with a page that doesn't look like the login page, don't worry, it's a pretty common issue. There are a couple easy fixes that can be done to actually get to the page you're looking for. One of which is just simply refreshing the page. Other times you need to clear your cache and cookies in order to actually find the page. In some instances, your Antminer actually rebooted and obtained a different IP address from your router. So please check your router again to ensure that the IP address is what you expect it to be. Now that we're successfully met with a login request, please use the username root and password root to gain access to your Antminer's interface. Yep. Certainly looks like an A3. Now that we've verified we're on the correct device, let's go to the miner status page to see how effective this is mining. Wow, that's 825. That's actually 10 faster than's advertised. For comparison, the Antminer A3 is over 250 times faster at mining SIA coin than the GeForce 1080 Ti, which is the most powerful GPU at this time. It looks like the A3s run a little warm. We would encourage putting them somewhere where there's proper ventilation. Let's check out the miner configuration page. It looks like the defaults are set to bitmains pools, which is no surprise. If somebody's gonna forget to change their stuff, I leave my in there too. Let's clear out these default mining pools and enter in our own. For this review, we're gonna be using siamining.com. I'm just going to use my own SIA wallet receiving address as my worker idea, and the pool pays out my wallet every couple of hours. After you enter in your information, don't forget to hit save and apply. After hitting apply, the mining engine is going to restart. Please allow two or three minutes for this to occur before visiting the status page. While we wait for the miner to get to full speed, let's discuss what's happening between the SIA developer community and Bitmain. Bitmain surprisingly dropped the A3 miner and single-handedly blew up the global hash rate for SIA coin. Recently, the SIA coin developers have been developing their own SIA coin ASIC miner known as the Obelisk SC1. They've sold a few thousand pre-orders, but delivery isn't expected until mid-2018. The Obelisk SC1 is expected to be a faster, more power-efficient machine than the Antminer A3, but that may not matter considering they're late to the party. In response to Bitmain's unannounced entry to the SIA coin mining scene, the SIA developers have warned that they may attempt a user-activated soft fork that would invalidate the Antminer A3s without affecting the Obelisk SC1 miner. They have stated that they will only attempt this if they perceive Bitmain as attacking the SIA coin network. In our opinion, the SIA developers would be sacrificing their credibility by attempting to invalidate the A3, especially since they have so much money to gain by selling a competing product. Regardless of whether Bitmain was impolite with their sudden Antminer A3 launch, SIA developers would only be hurting Bitmain's customers at this point. 
This controversy may be why Bitmain chose to call it a Blake 2B miner instead of a Sia coin miner. Once the status page populates, you'll notice that the default frequency is set to 600 MHz. It is possible to change this default configuration, but be aware that overclocking your system does void the warranty. If you wish to proceed anyway, go over to Miner Configuration, Advanced Settings, and hit the drop down for default settings and change it to whatever frequency you want to set. Note that underclocking will actually decrease the temperatures, so in some instances, underclocking your miner might be the best decision. We're going to let our miner run for 24 hours, and that was fast. If we check back at the status page, we'll notice that the average hashing rate is 831 gigahashes. While testing, we notice the high level of hardware errors. These errors alone aren't anything to freak out about. This merely indicates that a couple of the 188 ASIC chips are occasionally misfiring. As long as the hashing rate is above 815 gigahashes, your machine is working as intended. All right, so here's the moment everyone's waiting for. Let's go to cmmining.com and check how much we've actually made. Oh yeah, it looks like we made about 10,000 CA coin in 24 hours. Let's go to our CA coin wallet and make sure we're seeing the deposits less the outstanding balance still in the pool. Yep, looks like everything's there. For reference, clicking the receive button from the CA coin wallet is how we found our worker ID that we answered into the miner's pool configuration earlier. Let's see how much 10,000 Sia coin is worth on Bitrex, which is a pretty popular exchange. So we have 10,000 Sia coin, which is equivalent to about 0.03609 Bitcoin, which based on the $11,000 cost per Bitcoin comes out to just around $400. As many of you are undoubtedly aware, the amount that one mines from a miner will change over time as more people start mining. Since this is the first generation of ASICs miners for the Blake 2B algorithm, and the very first day that these are available, $400 represents the highest amount, assuming the values stay consistent. But with anything cryptocurrency, the future is always unknown, which is why it is so exciting. Thanks, Jason. As many of you are aware, the first generation miners for a particular algorithm are usually the most profitable. As more miners come online, one's relative share of the profits declines. Since nobody knows exactly how much more hashing power is going to be added to the SIA coin network in the near future, I think it's safe to say that $400 per day is not going to last for long. The real question is how low will the profits go in the future? To show you what I mean, let's go a little further into the future. Here we are 3 days 6 hours after starting. It looks like the A3 has kept performing well despite the hardware errors. The temperatures are still the hottest we've ever seen for an antminer, so finding a way to keep these guys cool is extremely important. From the mining pool, we've earned a total of just under 27,000 SIA coin. As you can see by the recent payouts, our 4 hour earnings have fallen by over 50% and are expected to continue dropping. To see why, let's go over to the pool stats page. Here we can see that the hash rate has exploded since the launch of the Antminer A3. While this should bode well for SIA coin itself, it remains to be seen whether miners will break even as quickly as they had hoped while they race against this tidal wave of new hashing power. Alright, let's move on to our final thoughts. We really like the utilitarian form factor that Bitmain has been using and believe it deserves a 10 out of 10. They are easy to repair and almost never suffer damage from shipping. We struggle to come up with any obvious improvements in this area. Ease of use scores a solid 9 out of 10. The only thing keeping it from a perfect score is the lack of an easier way to identify the device's IP address. Perhaps a small LCD status screen on the outside of the miner would suffice. We scored the noise as 2 out of 10, and that's being generous. These are not meant for your living rooms, people. In terms of speed, there's nothing in the world that is faster and it performs slightly better than advertised. The 10 out of 10 score is mostly due to the fact that this is the first ASIC capable of hashing with the Blake 2B algorithm. We gave a 7 out of 10 for the power rating. While it's incredibly efficient compared to a graphics card, the fact that you can't use Bitmain's own APW3++ with a standard 110 volt circuit to power it long term means that most of us here in the US need to either upgrade to 220 volt circuits or get a different power supply. 
Between having the highest chip temperatures of any Antminer to date, the potential risk of being invalidated by a SIA developer soft fork, or the possibility of having a ton of hashing power dumped onto the market by future batches from Bitmain, we gave the Antminer A3 a future score rating of just 3 out of 10. Our final overall score for the Antminer A3 comes in at 6.83 out of 10. If you liked this video, please subscribe and let us know by leaving a comment. Also, if you're interested in purchasing any cryptocurrency mining hardware, check us out on Amazon. Remember though, we only sell on Amazon, so watch out for fake sites that are using our name and logo.